Hey guys, in this vlog, I'm going to talk about the very first time I wrote code way back in 1994. I wrote my very first web page in 1994 because my brother came up to me and said, you know, you should set up a website. And I said to him, what's a website? You got to understand, in 1994, the web was really new to most people. Compared to today, there was a very small number of websites. And in fact, when I put up my first website, I had one of the very first websites in the world, and I had one of the very first websites with images. Back in those days, most of the websites were websites put out by universities, text only for academic communications. So it was a brand new field, and nobody knew what to make of it. Famously, at that time, the CEO of Microsoft thought, eh, this web thing is just a fad. That's uh, Bill Gates. Even Bill Gates thought it was just a fad. And I remember talking to a good friend of mine about six months, eight months later. We're thinking to ourselves, you know, this web thing, it might turn into something important. It might turn into something important. Anyway, so I'm walking into this whole new world of coding. I was not a nerd in my background. In fact, I studied design, photolithography, layout. And then I was in the import-export business of water purification products and rare fish for public zoos and aquariums and collectors. So I wasn't exactly a tech-oriented type of dude. But I saw the value in learning to code, even in those days, even when people weren't sure what was going to happen. I just knew in my gut that this web thing was going to be important. So I started to learn the basics of writing code. In those days... There wasn't such a thing as a Dreamweaver or a front page. There wasn't a web design software. There was Notepad. That was it. You just wrote code. So I bought a book on web design, well, HTML, and I just started to learn the basics. Now, back in those days, HTML was very, very simple compared to today. But the same basic rules were in place. CSS was a dream. There was no such thing as CSS. So in terms of styling, we had to rely heavily on images. We used a lot of GIFs and JPEGs in those days. Well, I'm speeding up a little bit. In the early days, we didn't even use too many GIFs and JPEGs because GIF and JPEG, I don't think it was supported until Mosaic 2, I think that browser was. Anyhow, it was this text layout. So back in those days, to make a website look good, you would just use basic typographic rules in, in terms of headings and paragraphs and uh, having good sentence structure. By the way, these rules still apply to today, right? If you don't have well laid out text, good alignment, it's not going to look good, despite how fancy your images are. Anyway, I digress. So what I want to do in this video, I just want to go over the feelings that I had at that time. I remember, first thing, because it was such a new thing, coding, so new and alien to me, that uh, I, a lot of uncertainty. You hit, the, you hit the ground and you're starting to write code, even simple HTML code. And of course, back in those days, you didn't have the resources that you have today to make learning this stuff easy. So I had to learn from pure geeks, which is always problematic because geeks don't know how to teach typically. And there was nobody who had a teaching background, who was really teaching code at that time. So I had to learn from the, from books or the white papers and the docs. And, and I put it together, you know, I put it together. But there's always a lot of uncertainty when you're learning anything new, especially something that's so foreign to you, like coding was so foreign to me. But what you got to do in those situations, you just got to remember the goal. Remember the goal. Remember that things do take time. Fortunately for me, I had decent business experience at that time, a few years and lots of martial arts experience. I remember with martial arts that there were certain movements and certain techniques, certain concepts that were very, very difficult for me to understand and grasp at first. In fact, some of these concepts took time before I really understood them. And knowing that, I applied that experience to my coding. When I was learning to code for the first time, it was very alien to me. And I just knew that with iterations, going back and working on it on a consistent basis, I knew that in a short period of time, things would clear up and I would begin to understand the broader concepts. Now, again, 
fortunately, because of my business and martial arts background, I knew the key to the whole thing was to get to the basics, to understand the basic concepts well, and understand the framework around the code that I was writing. In those days, it was HTML and a bit of JavaScript. So it, uh, well, JavaScript didn't come until, I think, 90, 95. Anyway, you get the idea. So, when you're approaching code for the first time, whether it be a programming language like JavaScript, Python, PHP, Java, whatnot, or whether it be just a simple markup language like HTML or styling language like CSS, you're going to have to just be patient with yourself and give yourself time to learn because you're going to have these anxieties. There's going to be resistant. Uh, the, the brain is resistant to change especially as you get older. And so how you make it less resistant is that you give your brain daily exposure to whatever it is you want to learn. So whether it be martial arts, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python, PHP, Java, C Sharp, doesn't matter, Swift. What you want to do is you want to expose, expose your brain, expose yourself to this stuff on a daily basis. In fact, that's how and why I designed my learning SaaS, my learning software, Studio so Web. I designed it understanding that. So that the idea is you come in, you do a quick lesson, five, six minutes, you answer some quiz questions or drive it in, and then you may do one or two others if you want. You may do many if you want, or you just do one or two and you leave, and you come back the next day, you do maybe just one. And what happens, and then the next day you do another two, and you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What, what happens is that as you continue to expose yourself to the coding, you're, you're getting your brain used to the idea, hey, this stuff, we're seeing this every day, we, we better learn this. So literally what happens is your brain physically starts changing to, to rewire itself, to make itself uh, more capable of learning how to code and to coding. It literally happens that way. So as I said in a recent video, the key to learning this stuff is frequency of exposure, meaning a little bit every day goes a long way. Better to learn 10 minutes every day than to spend one day and working on it for an hour. So keep that in mind. So what happens once you start learning how to code? What's the next step? What's the next feeling? Well, you start feeling excitement because you start realizing that by putting a little bit of effort, you're unlocking this whole world, this whole different way of thinking because what you'll see as you become more coding savant, more programmer aware, if you will, you're going to start seeing how software is developed. You're going to start understanding a different way of thinking. And it really opens up different possibilities. And this very structured and logical way of thinking will improve your problem solving skills, your organizational skills. It will just give you a different perspective on things. That's what I found personally. And in fact, what I learned from martial arts, I applied to coding. What I learned from coding, I applied to my business. Uh, did I apply to martial arts? Uh, maybe not so much. But, but there was a lot of things, a lot of lessons, a lot of the um, lessons and a lot of the way of thinking that I learned as I learned how to code. You've, I found it really helped me in other aspects of my life as well. So what's exciting when you first learn how to code, is, number one, is you see that uh, a different way of looking at things. Number two, you see you have a very powerful skill set that you're, you're, uh, you are developing. It's like getting a new superpower tool that you're putting in your toolbox that you can leverage. In life, and business, and coding, and software, etc., I say, number one, you need you know, good communication skills, written and verbal. You need um, good interpersonal skills as well, so you know how to speak to people in a way that uh, they don't mind speaking to you. Uh, number two, of course, you need good technical skills, good coding skills. They sort of go hand in hand. And in fact, I was talking to a business, uh, excuse me, a teacher who teaches at a college, and he, and he teaches business. And he teaches his students that they should learn at least the basics of the web stack, the basics of coding, because he realizes that modern day entrepreneurs have to learn how to code. And I've spoken about this, how important coding is in uh, modern business. And anybody, any entrepreneur who knows at least the basics of coding is going to have a tremendous advantage when they go out there and they try to compete with other people who don't understand the tech. Don't hide from the tech. It's a small hurdle to get over it quickly. You get over it quickly. And then it's going to open up this huge world. And then you're going to be pretty excited because you're going to 
see a lot more opportunities that you, you wouldn't see otherwise. So think of it this way. I'm going to use a bad analogy here. If you were blind, you couldn't see. You could only perceive the world through you know, your hearing and the other senses. But as soon as you open up your eyes, all of a sudden you see the world in a whole different light. And same thing with coding. When you open up your coding nerd eyes, all of a sudden you're going to start seeing things from a whole different perspective. You're going to say, you know, there's a situation here where maybe if I write a web app here, or maybe if I write a mobile app here, or maybe if I apply some AI here with Python, maybe we can solve a business problem there. You see where I'm going with this. But if you don't understand what you can do with code in the first place, it's going to be hard for you to identify these opportunities out there. So even if you're not the one writing the code, just having that understanding is going to open up your eyes to a whole bunch of possibilities. So it was, for me, back in 94, very exciting to see what coding can do. So I wrote my first website, and I started getting traffic on the site, even at, at, even at that early stages of the web. And as a result of the website, as a direct result, I was able to open up markets in Europe and in Asia, Singapore, Hong Kong, and other places, because the website gave me a platform to the rest of the world. And that's what's really exciting about this technology, where I talked about how coding is going is, is to uh, give you a lot of opportunities. It's a, it's a super tool. And this is just one example. Even back in those days when the whole business application of the web and the internet was still quite young, it opened up a huge opportunities for me. Just a quick anecdote, a quick story to give you some perspective. So back in those days, the challenges were different. The websites were simpler in terms of what you got. And uh, you had to do a lot more hacking because the technology wasn't as mature as it is today thing you'll learn in business, every, techno every technology, every business uh, sector, if you will, will go through stages of rapid development and then finally it will sort of level off where you don't see too many technological innovations in the business. So back in the early 90s, that's when the web was just starting. So for several years, you just saw this huge, like, things, are, things are changing so quickly. That's why books that were three years old were terribly out of date. This has changed since I would say about, i say about 2012, the web stack has really stabilized with HTML5 and CSS3. And uh, for the most part, JavaScript it is very stable. And that's just normal in every industry. I don't think you're going to see major, major changes uh, in the web stack, in the web space, in these programming languages for a while, simply because we've reached a level of productivity and maturity. It's kind of like smartphones, right? What's the difference between a smartphone from two years ago or three years ago versus the latest one today? It's not huge anymore. In the early days, it would be leap and bounds every year. But these days, it's very, very like iPhone 8 versus iPhone 10 or iPhone 7, iPhone, iPhone 10, not a big difference. Same thing, Samsung S8 versus S7, S9, minor incremental improvements at best. Same thing with the programming languages, by the way. Same thing with the frameworks, by, by the way. We've reached a level of plateau. Anyway, going back to my original story, back in those days, we really had to, had to hack things out. And all, there's all kinds of kludges, and it's like, like KillerSites.com is the, I, I've been ma managing that site, running that site, poof, what, 18, 19 years now? But it was originally founded by a guy who wrote a book called Creating Killer Websites, which was the best-selling book uh, of its time on web design. It was actually the second best-selling book on Amazon, I think, in 97. And uh, he got famous because in that book, he taught people how to use uh, transparent one pixel GIF images to be able to move fonts around and to, to find, finely tune images. Now these days, thank, thank, thank the lords, thank the nerds, we can do this with CSS, of course, very easily with padding margins. But with, in those days, we didn't have any of those tools, so there's all these hacks. I just mentioned the one pixel GIF. So all that said, my claim to fame, well, it wasn't a claim to fame, but I got a lot of accolades back in those days, I think it was 95, because I had one of the very first websites that had a photo. And I put up a photo of a fish, a very colorful fish, and 
because I could optimize that photo to, so it, it, wouldn't down, it wouldn't take two hours to download, at, in those days nobody had high-speed internet. It was like, it was very slow. I was like the king. I was the king of, the, I was king of code because I could put up a nice fish photo. Anyway, just a little perspective. They were hectic days in the 90s and early 2000s in terms of how things were evolving and changing. Fortunately for you guys, the technology has stabilized. It's much easier now to get things done. A little bit of code takes you a long way. And uh, the possibilities in terms of uh, building websites, writing code, writing JavaScript, writing Python, writing PHP, any language, not any language, most languages anyway, are huge now. And I think we have a lot more to go in terms of the innovations that can come out. And in future vlogs, I'm going to be talking about that with uh, some people I know who have uh, companies that are AI-based, AI, and uh, they're doing some interesting things. Three different sectors, meaning three different industries, they're all applying AI. One guy's applying AI combined with Ruby Rails. One guy's applying AI with PHP, Laravel. The AI is all done with Python, by the way, in all three cases. And then the third guy is doing AI with uh, PHP and I think a custom, a custom framework, which uh, is interesting. Anyway, three different people applying AI, all written in Python, the AI is, but they work with other languages and frameworks. So one guy's Rails, Ruby, one, two other guys are PHP. Anyway, wow, long-winded, tangent-filled vlog. I hope you found it interesting, though.